Welcome to Critical Angle. My name's Ian, and today we continue our over 5,300 nautical mile trip from Canada to South Brazil flying a brand new Bell 505 helicopter. This leg departs from Punta Cana International in the Dominican Republic and travels 300 miles east to Princess Juliana International on the small island of St. Martin where the video picks up on the approach to the island. Now, as you'll see, the approach went all kinds of wrong coming in here, and I'm definitely not proud of it. But I think it's a good learning experience that shows that even though there may be simple things that we can pick up on sitting here watching the video from an outside perspective, when you're in the cockpit and everything's happening all at once, even simple things may go overlooked. Let's get right into it. Juliana Approach Helicopter, November 857, Zulu Yankee. November 857, Zulu Yankee, Juliana. 857, Zulu Yankee is 45 miles to the west, uh, 7,500. We're inbound uh, to land, full stop. November 857, Zulu Yankee. Confirm your point of departure and your destination is Juliana, sir. Point of departure was uh, Putka and destination is Juliana, November 857, Zulu Yankee. Roger, sir. Type of aircraft. Type of aircraft is a Bell 505 helicopter. Juliana, Roger. Report 20 miles to the west of Juliana. Wind 120 degrees 12 knots, QNA 3008. Okay, report uh, 20 miles to the west helicopter 7 Zulu Yankee. And November 677 Foxshot Prophet, are you able to navigate from your present position? Affirmative uh, Fox Pop. And November 857 Zulu Yankee, squawk 0126. Or 126 for helicopter in number 857, Zulu Yankee. Mountain 8142 is joining 5-mile final. Mountain 8142, Juliana, roger. The twin other traffic and is, on, is on a 1-mile final ride. Um, San Juan Radio Helicopter, November 857, Zulu Yankee. Unable to read you. Uh, just letting you know we're on with uh, Juliana approach. Have a good day. Now the reason I'm transmitting back to San Juan Radio in Puerto Rico right now is because uh, I had lost contact with them due to the distance and the lower altitude we were at. So it, after we got set up with Julian Approach, I just went back to that channel just to make sure that, uh, you know, if they could hear me, that uh, to let them know that we were already on with Approach and they didn't need to worry about us anymore. Uh, this is going to be nice, one. dude. Straight Series in Approach, three, two, easy. One. Clear official Approach report out of 3,000 feet uh, descending. I need to see the yacht that is below us. This is nice. We'll do our out of 4,000 right now. Series is one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. Traffic is a twin otter, approximately Got a seven miles on it or what? southeast yeah. of Juliana, yeah. 1,500 feet oh, also en route to the same bar. So maintain 2,600 feet until you have the twin otter traffic in sight. Helicopter November 87857 eight, Zulu Yankee, orbit outside of Juliana's control zone. We'll advise you when to proceed inbound. Okay, we'll orbit outside helicopter 857 Zulu Yankee. Juliana, yeah. Copa 133, we are in Bravo 1 requesting push. Three, three. Pushback start is six zero here. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get us in a hold on. At this point, it's starting to get a little hectic in the cockpit. We've got non stop radio traffic and now an instruction to hold outside of the airspace so that they can sequence us into the arrivals. While this certainly wasn't expected, it's important in aviation to be able to change your plans at a moment's notice. Right now, I'm programming the G1000 to execute a hold on our current position. If this aircraft was equipped with an autopilot, the helicopter would hold us in this oval track indefinitely. Autopilot is a great resource in order to reduce task load in high saturation environments and to change your plan of action. While this aircraft now has several great autopilot options to choose from, at the time of this flight, the Bell 505 was so new that no autopilot had been certified for it yet. So, my autopilot is sitting to my left and his name is Felipe. Without an autopilot on board, these long flights would become difficult to manage everything on your own. Adapting your plan of action on the fly while trying to hand fly a helicopter is certainly no easy task and it would increase the level of risk quite a bit due to distraction. Delta Victor, Delta Victor Romeo 502, taxi to Alpha and hold short. Taxi to Alpha, hold short, DV 502. That's correct. 
Papa Julius Sir, extra mic. Go to the right again. Five mile final. Papa Julius Sir, extra mic. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's come right. So follow this. So let's slow it down to uh, slow way down. That's 60 knots. So right now you can see me trying to call the local FBO at Signature to coordinate with them upon landing to make sure that they were expecting us so that we can get fuel. Since we were trying to continue today's trip down to St. Lucia after St. Martin, I wanted to minimize time on the ground. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a hold of anyone, which was starting to add to the frustration that you will see starts to build as we make our way into the airport. So see how I made a waypoint and I just I just uh, hit direct two on the waypoint, went down to hold, and you can hold anywhere. So this is a controlled like one minute outbound, one minute inbound. It'll just keep you in one nice spot. Okay, let me, let me start a stopwatch on how long we've been holding. The reason I'm starting a timer is just to keep track of how long we've been holding. As a helicopter flying under visual flight rules, we were just told to hold outside the airspace. Now, we're not critical on fuel or anything like that, but the last thing you want to have happen is to be forgotten about by a busy controller for an extended period of time. Due to our high level of maneuverability, helicopters are usually the bottom of the priority list of traffic, and I have had controllers forget about me before. November 857 Zulu Yankee, proceed inbound. Proceed about 857 Zulu Yankee. Finally, we're clear to proceed inbound. Now, here's where things start getting jumbled up. You'll see in just a bit where I'm misinterpreting his instructions to hold just short of the airport. Section of M857 Zulu Yankee. Okay, orbit in that position. Uh, five miles to the west, request landing to Alpha Taxiway Beam uh, Arendelle Signature SPF. Roger, orbit at the two mile final. Four two mile final, helicopter seven Zulu Yankee. Correct, you can make that uh, off to your left. One with a six. Eight helicopter traffic will be orbiting to the left on a two mile funnel. Orbiting to the left. So you can see by me repeating it to myself that I'm just now catching what he actually said when he was telling another aircraft to look out for me. It's easier than you might think in aviation to hear what you want to hear when you have a plan of action and are told something outside of what you expect to be told. You really have to listen extra carefully in these dynamic situations to be sure that you understand what is being said. And if you don't understand, it's perfectly okay to ask for clarification, which you'll see me do now. And Tower Helicopter 7 Zulu Yankee, just to clarify, did you want us to orbit uh, two mile finals that we said? Very firm. Land, uh, arrange, your, uh, land uh, arrange us to land at time 1656. Okay, we'll arrange to land at 1656, helicopter 857, Zulu Yankee. Correct. The time now is 1654 due to wake turbulence, uh, medium aircraft just departing. The thing about flying a helicopter into a major airport is you're usually throwing a wrench into their arrival plans. They have a bunch of fast jets coming in and lined up to land and take off one after another, and then here we come puttering in at 90 or so knots. Nice. You wanna go straight? Yeah, keep going. CV502, confirm the right parking. Looking at the airport from above, here is the FPO that I'm wanting to land at directly on the west side in green. It can keep us out of the way of the arrivals and we can get in and out quickly for fuel. However, way down here on the far end of the runway in red is the area that I'm about to find out the controller wants to put me. It is definitely not where I want to go because there is no services available at this end of the runway. FMA 857 Zulu Yankee, proceed for landing. Oh yeah, proceed for landing 857 Zulu Yankee. Okay, good to go. I think he's just giving us spacing because a big uh, aircraft just took off, so... Okay. Okay, man. Oh, well, so speed? Airport. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of tough to see the airport. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the control tower and everything, it's it's on this uh, yeah, edge. Yeah, just first yeah, yeah. latch. Uh -huh. November 857 Zulu Yankee, runway 10, clear to land. Wind 12010. You're going to be parking at the helipad. Clear to land 10 uh, and uh, the helipad at uh, signature on the west side of the airfield, Zulu Yankee. Second. And we're we're looking to go direct to the uh, signature FBO on uh, near Alpha uh, Taxiway. Is that uh, where you want us to go? Stand by. You're good to, you're clear to land? Yeah, we are. Yeah. I don't think he was quite understanding uh, that I wanted to land Alpha Taxiway. Alpha Taxiway yeah, to yeah, FBO. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The number 441 Tango Tango, see a flight plan. Okay, so Can I slow down a little bit more. Croy to CJ Lloyd, uh, currently 370, I mean, how much is it, Mike? Juliana for the visual approach, uh, 109. 200. 
Delta Victor Romeo 502, report passing flight over 100. Oh God, can't believe I'm doing this. Passing flight over 100, DB 502. Delta Victor Romeo 502, contact sound 1715. 115, Delta Victor Victor India 502, flight. 677 Foxtrot, pop a question. Station 100. November 677 Foxtrot, Papa. November 677 Foxtrot, Papa, Juliano. 50. I haven't been here in a few years, just wondering, uh, can we get our clearance earlier or do we have to wait till we have engines running and ready? Call when you're ready for taxi, sir. Can you tell us what uh, departure to expect? So oh, Alpha. I expect Is it Alpha? No, 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 I mean Roger, Alpha. Roger, thank you. Yeah. Eight, uh, five, seven, Zulu Yankee, expedite, uh, Fox, expedite all the way down to the uh, hotel ramp. Expedite to hotel, hey, Zulu Yankee. And I think Alpha was the Correct. first. No, no, hotel. It's Okay, expedite, expedite. Yeah, to, to hotel. Keep going, keep oh, going, okay. keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Order 638, uh, continue slow. Stay up a little bit higher there, bro. A little bit higher. Okay, so... F. It's gonna be hotel. He yeah, said. Jeff. Huh? What? Is that right? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up front. Are you sure? Oh, this is the F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November 857 Zulu Yankee. Uh, can you uh, air taxi a little faster? Yeah, A-frame, yeah. Was that Foxtrot you said for Zulu Yankee? Hotel ramp, hotel ramp. Hotel the Yankee. Oh, okay. There it is, down there, down there. Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, go ahead. Clear up the runway. Expedite. Looking at the airport diagram, you can see why we were a little confused. We were unfamiliar with the airport, and we were looking for a hotel taxiway directly after Foxtrot to be able to reach the FBO at midfield, when in reality, it's almost half the length of the entire rest of the runway at the far end. Honestly, while I definitely goofed here by not making absolutely clear what my intentions were, I believe this is also poor execution on the controller's behalf. If he wanted us to land at the far end of the airport, it would have made more sense for us to circle around and approach from the southwest where we could have stayed clear of the runway the entire time. Bad, over here. Oh, yeah. Look that. 857 Zulu Yankee, confirm you are clear. Uh, confirming clear, Zulu Yankee. Blackfin 233, three, stick letter, Jelena's control zone, report crossing radio 180, wind 10010, QNH is 3005. 3005, outside the airspace and report radio 180. Confirm 857 Zulu Yankee, confirm on the ground. On the ground. <laughs> Okay, so well, it's not exactly uh, what we were planning, huh? I don't want to shut down here, man. There's nobody here. Well, the important thing is that we made it to our destination and landed safely on the ground. This was probably the worst experience we had coming into any of the controlled airports along our entire route. Once we landed there, we were essentially stuck. We didn't even have a taxiway to back taxi towards airport services, and even if we did, the radio was so jammed up with the communications that I wouldn't have been able to get a word in anyways. We eventually ended up shutting down, and thankfully, an FBO vehicle came by to check on us after about 20 minutes. The biggest takeaway lesson here from our landing at Princess Juliana was to expect the unexpected and make sure everyone is on the same page with the plan, especially if you're going outside of the norm of operations. Engine out. Hopefully a fuel truck can get to us, man. Just kind of like uh, far out of the way. To the end, 342 request start of fuel conditions. Yeah, 343, startup is approved, runway 10, QNH is uh, trees.